Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and today not a fun video to, to make really being a South African but something that has to be addressed and that is the current sort of doping crisis and inverted commas that the country is currently experiencing. We have to look at it um, pretty holistically and we need to be very honest and blunt about it and uh, also be a little more mature about this you know it's, it's, it's very frustrating when you try and have these conversations. Um, and people are very knee-jerk reaction, for example. People are very dismissive sometimes. And uh, it just doesn't do anybody really, any, any real good to be over dramatic, for example, to over-exaggerate about an issue which is so important and, and is very serious. Um, and uh, I think what we see is people throwing around accusations far too quickly, far too easily, um, given the fact that there's no consequences. And we need to move away from a culture away from that, where those who have done wrong, get the full force of uh, the criticism, the abuse, not necessarily abuse, never, you never abuse somebody, but the criticism they receive, um, the punishments, for example. But we cannot also then sort of throw around accusations willy-nilly at anybody and people who are doing everything correctly and are still performing at the highest levels. Um, so hopefully in the comments, we can have a, a mature discussion about this, but we need to address the elephant in the room. Um, and that is, of course, he's become the latest South African player to be under a potential doping ban microscope after maybe having his test positive for anabolic steroids. A very different situation to the likes of, for example, uh, you know, your Alston Young kids up here at Giancu, who test positive for uh, different uh, sort of uh, performance enhanced drugs, but something a bit more niche as opposed to literally anabolic steroids, which is what Spoon Corsi has uh, tested positive uh, for. Although, to be fair, I mean, they're all performing enhancing drugs, so they're all sort of, I suppose, a form uh, to a certain degree. Um, but a uh, very different type of, uh, of, of substance. And there's a lot of different types of substances which change all the time. So it is a very complex world that we live in with regards to performance enhancing drugs and performance enhancing supplements, for example, because there are a lot of legal supplements, there's a lot of illegal supplements, and you know we're looking at a clean game, but a game where the goalposts consistently do move with regards to what you can take, what you can't take, how much you can take, um, for example. And uh, that is why... Um, the testing is so important because, you know, it has to monitor the various different um, players and different things that people do take, which change a lot. Um, so in terms of uh, the current situation, Spoon Course is currently under investigation after having had tested positive. Um, we know that, for example, Alton Yankees is currently serving a, a four-year ban after he failed to appeal um, the ban after he tested positive. And obviously the big one was appeal Dianti um, back in 2018 when he got that four-year ban, which ended and uh, now he's sort of been back and uh, and, and good to go. Um, well, 2019, really, actually, it was officially. But, um, yeah, so it's been a very, very interesting uh, case. The, the biggest sort of problem at the moment is not so much necessarily even the professional system because, you know, I mean, that's three players. It's a lot of players, far too many players. And if you look back at, for example, the Chili Boy Rada Pelle situation, um, but obviously there's also a massive issue at schoolboy level. Now, the interesting thing with the schoolboy level is that it's never going to be a good thing having these players, I mean, having, you know, schoolboys um, test positive and stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is that what South Africa does have, um, which is a very big positive, is a very, very good and competent um, testing system. And uh, there is a massive uh, drive across the country to keep sports clean. Um, we do have a, an accredited lab in SARDS, which is world class, and uh, we do test across all different levels. I mean, we're talking varsity cup levels, uh, curry cup, URC, schoolboy, provincial weeks, club rugby. There is testing happening all over the place, which is a really, really positive thing because it means that, first of all, it does expose those who are trying to gain an advantage by using illegal supplements, but also it sets a really big precedent and a really big warning to those to make sure that you are playing clean and that you are staying clean. So from that perspective, it's a really big positive that, that in general, South Africa Sport is really proactive about this. The fact that they are looking at schoolboy doping, for example, and they are testing um, and, and across these levels to ensure that, uh, that that people are being safe, for example, and and, and that we're not you know creating a culture and, and getting rid of the, any sort of stigma regarding the doping situation in the country. I can probably as a guess, that we probably test a lot more, especially in the recent times, than a lot of countries were at school level, for example, even at amateur level. Um, you know, it's it's a really, it's it's not something that's commonly done. Uh, you know, you, you're not, you know, you're not going to go into, for example, schools in, I don't know, a, 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 a Chile or Argentina, um, and there's going to be as, probably as, as big sort of nationwide testing at, at school level for rugby that there probably is in South Africa. 
Um, so from that perspective, it is really a good thing in terms of us being proactive and the fact that there are these systems in place. The issue is obviously with exposing the endemic that there is at the moment. Now, doping is not a South African problem. It is not just something that happens in South Africa. We know it's Reese Webb, for example, former Welsh um, uh, scrum off. He is currently serving a four-year ban as well. He made the move to France. It got picked up, and uh, he has now got that ban to serve as well. There's been doping across different leagues. Um, if you look at Chris Mayer, for example, in the English Premiership, he's got a four-year ban, um, and he was, and that was back in 2022. Doping is a worldwide problem. Um, you know, we've got cyclists being being banned. You've got Olympians being banned, for example. You have cricketers being banned. Football players being banned. Paul Pogba's being banned, for example. For football. So, so it's frustrating to sort of sit there and say, you know, South African doping is in a match made in heaven because it's just not at the end of the day that is very uh, inflammatory to a talk and and pretty much very much sort of uh, almost like gaslighting uh, the issue and that's why like, frustrating is the fact that we can't have these kind of conversations without people sort of just throwing it around and people then sort of go and look at, at isolated cases where people are found out and banned and punished and then turn around and say well that means that you know anything that the pre mocks do you know is irrelevant because there's you know they're all cheats which they're not these players are constantly tested um, and three of the players who are currently serving bands, for example, were not involved in the World Cup last year. So good luck trying to sit there and say that the World Cup didn't matter. Um, Alton Yankees got banned last year, four years off 2019. Spoon Corps have been banned this year, which is five years off 2019. So no players um, have been banned that were involved in major campaigns when they got their tests um, positive. So, you know, you can't go back and put any sort of, don't come up with sort of asterisks and all the crap like that. You know, it's not the case. And and I think I really, really begrudge the fact that there is that rhetoric. But the problem is until you kind of clamp down on these things and you get under control, there's always going to be a stigma being attached um, to the sort of South African teams, which is what we've got to get away from. And it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation because we have been proactive and we have started doing all the testing across, you know, younger age groups and across the board, which is identifying more. And, you know, it's kind of a bit of a chicken and egg situation because because you're doing more testing, you're finding more positive results. Therefore, it looks like you've got a big problem. Whereas if you weren't doing all that kind of testing, you wouldn't be getting those results. And the problem would still be there, but be going under the radar and you wouldn't know about it. So that's that's kind of the problem. And uh, it's a difficult one to try and, and solve. And that's why, you know, there's, there's course, for example, the the the, the sort of performance enhanced uh, uh, games, you know, that there's going to be that, in theory, once they get financial backing, there's going to be that whole kind of Olympics type thing of people on, on performing enhancing drugs. And it's about, you know, getting absolutely every possible inch out of human performance using any possible uh, means, including performance harshing drugs and the likes. So it's a tricky situation. Um, as I said, as South Africans, you've got to try and grow a bit of thick skin, but hopefully you can have mature conversations about how we deal with this. Is it, is it a lack of education system? Is it a, a press situation? You know, are we um, you know, almost professionalizing too many much of, of our rugby in this country, which is forcing players to try and find that edge because they're so desperate to, to to succeed where are the problems where do the problems lie how is it available why is an availability for example you know how do we clamp down on that how do we clamp down on the quality of for example supplements in the country because that's also a major issue you know, people could be taking something which for all they know is completely legal and, and completely fine and uh, then it not being uh, done properly uh, or mixed properly and containing other um, um, sort of byproducts which are then um, banned and we've seen that a lot you know people taking um, you know products which haven't been tested and that's why there's such strict testing not so much just on the players but on the actual products itself and if you look at the Springbok squad for example they'll be categorically testing the supplements and anything that the, the box are sort of taking or the players are taking to ensure that it is all legal and that it's not going to suddenly return an adverse result in the upcoming future and, and these players get tested a lot so you cannot 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 um get away from it to be perfectly honest that's something which is um just a fact you, these players get tested so often that you cannot take it and get away with it you will get caught um, and so you know every single player you know that has not uh, you know returned adverse finding you cannot put anything against their name about them using uh banned substances because if they were they would have been caught by now let me know down in the comments below on constructive conversations, constructive um, suggestions. How do we, as a, as a worldwide sporting community, clamp down on sort of the doping issues and what is the solution? What are some of the solutions we can try and uh, get? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.